So these are the first three levels where you need, the, the stronger the bonds are on each level and the more levels you have access to with someone, the stronger you can share with them, the deeper the fusion between the two of you can be. Now when we come to the place of um, will or ego, this is where, perhaps it's a bit tricky, but the guide talks at some point about that we do not truly see others, that we see what we want to see. And we may also not see ourself. We will see what we aspire to be rather than who we are. And this is the area, even though it sounds like feeling and it sounds like a lot of other things, this is the area that I'm going to call the area of ego and will. Will is a two-edged sword like everything else. You, can't, you need will to get through life. You need will to accumulate education, to make friends, to uh, be out in the world enough to attract a mate, to, to do whatever it is you have to do in the world. But your will also has the ability to feel that it must protect you or protect uh, the, the organism itself by shying away from things that are negative or difficult to understand or confusing or frightening. And the part of you that does that is your ego. The consciousness, the part of me that is talking to you, that is trying to string the sentences together, is the part of me that is reaching into me and finding my feelings about the lecture and my mental understanding of the lecture. Um, it includes telling me to sit up straight. It includes telling me to project so that people can hear my voice. But the part of me that is orchestrating all that is the part I'm calling the ego. And for two people to fuse together, they also need to meet on the level of ego. And by that I mean that you need to want to be with the other person. That on a level of ego, if there's a reason why you're afraid to be close to someone and you close yourself off a little bit, then that person is not going to get to know you, which means it's going to inhibit the feeling exchange. And you, part of you is going to be closed off so that your sexual force and your sexual energy will not flow. Part of the physicality of sex is an energetic part. And that it's, I, I, I think of it like flowing water. When the energy flows and there are no blockages, when it does not, uh, when there's no force behind it, when it simply runs like a, like a, a, a creek down pebbles in a brook, or flows like a, a long soft river, it simply moves and there's nothing obstructing it. And if there are things obstructing, it simply goes around it or waits a bit. There, there's not a, an, an urgency to the flow of energy. That that's part of the physical level. But when you do not want to be seen by another person, when your ego mind says, I am not good enough, if they find this out, they will not like me, so I will hide or restrict that part of me. Then at that point, you are blocking up, you are damming up, not only your physical energetic energy, but you are also hiding behind a mask on a feeling exchange level. And you are going to be preventing the person from getting to know you. Now if you're doing, if you're blocking yourself on a physical level and you're blocking yourself up on a, a feeling exchange level, then naturally on a mental communication level you would also tend to avoid a certain subject or over talk a situation, try to impress someone, try to stay one place rather than letting the conversation drift the way it might naturally occur. So the level that I'm talking uh, about will is the part of you that consciously dictates and makes decisions about who you are with, what you want, 
and is not in full communication, is not in full alignment with what the rest of you may want. So in effect, the conscious will is the place where dissonance takes place. If you have dissonance on a physical level, I want to eat and I want to exercise, eat, exercise, eat, exercise. Uh, eventually you do one or both or nothing. If you have a dissonance on an emotional level, I like you, I hate you, I like you, I hate you, uh, you may just sit there and feel all those feelings at once. On a mental level, if you say, I disapprove of this because of my values, but I like this aspect of it, so I'm back and forth on whether I want to proceed in a certain direction. But on a will level, when we hit dissonance, we feel that we need to make a decision. So it is the will that says, on a mental level, I'm back and forth on this, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. Now, there are times where that's reasonable and appropriate, but there are also times where we are trying to move forward without having resolved the conflict. And that's where the will level can mess up all the other levels and create a lot of problems for the organism and for the individual. So let me see if I can repeat this. On a mental level, we have thoughts. And the thoughts, if they're honest, may come and go, and they may be in conflict, and they are simply thoughts. You can lay them out and say, isn't that interesting? I have 15 different thoughts, and they don't seem to be congruent. They don't seem to be too coherent. I wonder what this is. On an emotional level, you can have different kinds of feelings and say, wow, look at these conflicting feelings. They're, they're all over the map. I'm crying at funerals. I'm, uh, excuse me, I'm crying at weddings. I'm, I'm happy at funerals. What is going on here? But that's just the emotional reality. On a physical level, you can feel an urge to do something and a reluctance to. And you may literally go back and forth on your feet. You may, you may take a step towards and take a few steps back. But the part of you that decides what to do in a given situation, that part of you is determined by your ego, by your conscious mind, rather than a mental process. So that's why I'm putting this in the triangle. It's in the lecture, even though it's not identified in that way.